no, here I am, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Good evening. Hello, how are you, love? Hello. All right, are you all right? Hello, how are you, love? Hello. All right, are you all right? Hello, sir, how are you? I, hello, love. Thank you, I, so, no, I'm all of that, excuse me, I could, no, ah, what? <laughs> no, the thing is, I'm, I'm sorry I've kept you waiting, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've been able to amuse yourselves. Kept yourself amused or amused each other, have you? <laughs> naughty, aren't you? You're naughty. That must stop now because the focus of attention has arrived. I have arriven, ladies and gentlemen. So that must stop. No, I'm very sorry. It's not my fault, actually. Now, I'll tell you what happened. We've got here, we're supposed to have here, what they call a stage manager. You've heard of a stage manager? We're well, supposed to run everything. Well, this one couldn't run a tap. <laughs> I told him, I said, now, look, don't start this show till you know I'm in the vicinity, till you know I'm in the theatre. He was, I said, don't ring up the curtain, as we say, till you know I'm in the theatre. See, fool, you saw what happened, didn't you? <laughs> so, I mean, see, I'm all of a flutter now, love, you see? You haven't got any spare Valium, have you, by any chance? I've, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm here now. Now, the thing is, I shall now divest myself of my clothing. <laughs> don't worry, I've, I've got something on underneath. This, this is not Hollywood Wives. <laughs> there we are. There we are. We are. Give us a hand, now, will you? There we are. Well, there you go. Don't rip it. That's it. There we are. Yeah, that's it. Fine. Would you hold that love for me? Why not? That's, thank you very much. Take, take care of that, won't you? There's nothing in the pockets. Nothing in the pockets except my phone number. <laughs> What? Now, please, don't be not naughty, naughty. Now, I know what you're saying to yourselves. You're saying to yourselves, oh, he's wounded. Ah. Oh. Oh. That's right, get your ass out. That's it. <laughs> he's wounded. I tell you, no, I've had, I've had a terrible, terrible experience. Now, I tell you, no, but, ah, now, you, what's your name, sir? Roger. Roger. What is your, do you know, uh, have you read the, Ka, you know, the Kama Sutra? <laughs> Have you read it, Mrs? <laughs> she's at her age, she's still reading the Karma Sutra. Listen, have you, you, know, you, know the, you know what the Karma Sutra is, don't you? It's a book, book about the... Yeah, I thought you looking... Uh, it's a book about those positions in love, you know. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Roger. There's a misprint on page 38. You'll be very careful, boy. <laughs> oh, I've hurt, I hurt myself, girl. <laughs> Never mind, I'm better now. But the doctor says I can have it off tonight. <laughs> I'm talking about the sling. <laughs> Don't lower the tone of the proceedings already now. I shall now make my way... Well, you know, I didn't take this off now, I think. Let's see if it'll come up here. You know this as well, love. Catch it. <laughs> you can boil your Christmas pudding in that. <laughs> right, I shall now make my way up to the rostrum. Here we are. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you something. The management. I'm so glad this side of I. How are you, all right? I, uh, I'm, the, the management would be jolly glad I got here, I'll tell you that. Because the, the manager of the theatre. Because very funny, you know. <laughs> yeah, dear. I didn't know I'd be here. About six weeks ago, I was sitting at home one night, watching the telly. Nothing on, mind you, but you get used to that position, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the phone rang. The phone rang, I thought, now, who can this be? Can't be my agent, because he thinks I'm dead. <laughs> It was the management of this theatre. This man there's a management here. I said, what management? They said, Playhouse, Western Supermare. Oh, I said, yeah. I said, hello, management, what can I do for you? They said, we'd like you to do a concert for us, if you will. I said, oh, goody, goody, a concert. Yes. Why is that, I said. They said, well, the point is this, is that all the other artists we phoned up are all engaged, they're all busy. You're the only one who doesn't seem to be working. So, <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? So I said, oh, really, yes. They, he said, the management said, see, the point is, we have to do three concerts a year in order to keep our licence. <laughs> Otherwise, they're likely to turn the whole place into a sex shop. So, <laughs> but I thought myself, time I finish here tonight, they'll think it's that already. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. So, I expect you're glad to see me here as well, aren't you? Yes. Oh, good. Because I must say, some of you look as though you could do with a good laugh. <laughs> in fact, some of you look as though you could do with a good wash. <laughs> 
Oh, she says, that's rude. Oh, he's insulting us. He's insulting us. Well, that's what they call alternative comedy. Have you, have you heard of that, alternative comedy? You see it on television, everybody insults you. All the four-letter words. Alternative comedy, they call it. Yes. I think it's disgraceful, don't you? I mean, take the word, they do, they insult. I was like, listen, I was once today. Uh, that's right. What, dear? Don't doze off already. What's the day, love? <laughs> that, well, that's right, then. Don't be shy. That's right. Well, it was last Tuesday. The thing was... <laughs> no, I went to this club, you see, and this comic there, this supposed to be an alternative comic, and he was doing these jokes and insulting the audience. He called them every name, name under the sun. Insulted them, four-letter words. And then, yes, and in the end, he spat on them. <laughs> yes, he did. He was spitting on the audience. And they... Sh my, hello. <laughs> Someone's dropped one. <laughs> well, I said I'd bring the house down. <laughs> no, no, the thing was, no, this this comic was insult. He was, eh? That's not that, that's not supposed to be in it. That bit, you know. <laughs> that's extra. That's extra. <laughs> no, this comic was was insulting the audience, and he spat them at the end, and they shrieked. They loved it. They loved it. So, ladies and gentlemen. If things don't go too well here tonight, <laughs> some of you might get a bit splashed. In fact, some of you might even get a bit drenched. I should keep, keep that over, overcoat handy, dear father. You might need it, yeah. I, where we are now. I tell, mind you, I tell you something, you know, I've had a terrible journey here. I've had a terrible time. Oh, no. Well, ah, no. You see, I thought the management would send me a car. See? No, they send me a map. <laughs> I mean, so I thought to myself, I'll come down by express coach. Have you tried those? Those express coaches, all the, all the, they've got the lot. Oh, they're, they're luxurious, they're speedy, they're cheap. <laughs> oh, everything on them, haven't they? They've got videos, hostesses, scented soap in the loo, all, oh, everything is possible to do, yes. I thought that's what I'll do. So I started off in Fine Fettle. Fine Fettle. That's north of Finchley. <laughs> Fine Fettle. No, come on now, they're flowing out now. <laughs> Come on now, get your titters out now, please. Get your titters out. Titter time has arrived. Let's have all the little titters out. That's right. And the big ones, Mrs. Yes. <laughs> get your big titters out. Let's have all titters. Out. Let's have the whole place throbbing with the titters. Now, um... Oh, I love my titters. Your Francis loves his titters, you know, love. Yes. Titter at will. Who's Will? <laughs> well, if Will doesn't like it, sod him. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> That's what they call alternative comedy, that. Alternative comedy. Now, the, oh, the thing was, I went to this, this coach station in, uh, where, you know, down in... The, and and uh, what's today? Oh, was that this morning it was. That's right, yeah. It was this morning. Eight, about 8 o'clock this morning. And I went to this coach station. They were all milling around. Crowds of people milling around, looking lost. They were just the drivers. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, 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 here, listen, here. And there was, I was just standing there, meandering around, and this woman came over to me, this girl. She was a hostess, I think she was, didn't we? Well, she was, because she had all these buttons on, and she, she was enormous. <laughs> oh, she was what they call ample. <laughs> she had enough amples for six. I mean, she... <laughs> you'd have been jealous, dear, I'm telling you. You'd have been living with a jealousy. Mind you, she had a very small waist, but they say nothing grows in the shade. <laughs> nothing grows... <laughs> No, 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 no. Oh, I'm getting a sitting ovation already. No, I don't know. No, we, the point is that she... And this girl came over to me, this hostess, she said, um, Mr Howard? I said, yes. Oh, she said, oh. Are we going to have the pleasure? <laughs> so I said, well, n not here in the ticket office, I said. <laughs> well, she said, no, um... You, um, will you come with me? I'll take you to the coach. Follow me. So he went on to the coach. She said, she said, me to took me to the coach. And uh, she said, well, there we are. There's a nice seat for you. Everything reclines. So, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, <laughs> wait a minute. Don't rush ahead of me. So she said to me, tell me, she said, um, are you going all the way? <laughs> so I said, well, if you are, yes. <laughs> She said, all right, then I'll rouse you <laughs> when we get close. Yeah. 
Do you know something? I, I did something terrible, ladies and gentlemen. No, I did something I'm very ashamed of. I fell asleep. <laughs> Silly fool. Silly Francis fell asleep. I had to rouse myself. <laughs> yeah, and I was, I was on this... No, oh, no. You see, and I, I, I thought, God, this pillow's hard. I was laid like that and looked up, and I saw this face looking down at me, and it was, it, it was a, a woman. I thought, that's not the hostess. It was the woman on the seat next to me. This one on the seat next to me. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. She said, I'm glad you've moved. She said, my, my thigh had gone to sleep. <laughs> Well, I said, I'm so sorry. I said, it's the first time I've gone to sleep on a thigh, I've just gone to sleep. <laughs> yeah, so, anyway, I, I apologised to this woman. She said to me, don't worry, she said, my husband usually goes to sleep on the couch, makes a nice change. So I thought, hello, here we are again. But she wasn't my type. No, she wasn't my type. I, see, I don't think the green hair and tattoos goes with a walking stick and a bus pass, do you? <laughs> do you? I don't, no. Anyway, I look, I look round and I, I, look, I looked out of the window. Ah! Oh, I had such a shock. It wasn't my reflection, no. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought to myself, now, three, three questions occurred to me. Three questions occurred to me. One, what are all these French cars doing in Somerset? <laughs> Two, why are we boarding a ferry? <laughs> and three, why is this place advertised as Dover? <laughs> and I'll tell you, because I was on the wrong coach, that's why! But I made it, ladies and gentlemen. And do you know why I did it? For you. <laughs> yes! Yes, as God is my witness, yes! Because I'm loyal, you understand? Your Francis is loyal. I'm loyal, I crawl through anything. Well, almost anything. <laughs> for, you. for you, I would! I crawl through fire and flood to get here, because I'm loyal, my friends. I'm loyal, loyal, do you hear? Loyal to the end. <laughs> now, if that doesn't get me a BAFTA award, nothing will. <laughs> look at the look at the woman here, she's crying her eyes. Out. Look, I'm only acting, love, because she's crying. Yeah, you're right. I I should have gone straight. That's right. I mean, straight. I mean, it's a bit of straight actor. I mean, you're quite right. Now, listen. Let's get on with this schmuzzle now, shall we? Uh, I'm going to ask this stage manager if you know. Name's Name's Tarquin. <laughs> you, you should You should see him, Tarquin. They should call him Sequin because <laughs> the way he prances around still has his problem. Tarquin, will you raise the blind? Raise the blind if you'll be kind enough. That's right. We'll get on with it now. You see? Ah, you see? All the latest technology. Here we are. Look. Now, here, ladies and gentlemen, you see, that's the list there. You can tell that. And it's the list. You see, tonight, we're going to rather have an upmarket show tonight. It's all very intelligent tonight. This is a show tonight. I'm going to discuss all these subjects, and you're going to choose them and talk about them. <laughs> yes, you are. You're going to discuss them with me. You didn't know you were, but now you do know. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the thing, this show is for the thinking man. Beg your pardon. I mustn't say that, must I? No, sorry. What have I got to say? Person. Thinking person. I'm so sorry. Do you come from the Isle of Person? <laughs> the Isle of Man? You don't. Soon it'll be in person. Soon it'll, it'll be Manchester, it'll be Person Chester. <laughs> Poor old man Devani, it'll be Person Devani. <laughs> All right, thinking person. Here we are then. This shows for the thinking person, ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, we have our, all these subjects we're going to discuss. <coughs> can you smell anything? <laughs> I don't mean me. I mean, I can smell. I can... Tarquin, raise this curtain up, will you? I can smell. Sure. <laughs> now. <laughs> no. Donkeys? Dear God. Look at you, I can tell. Weird little look. Naughty donkey. Listen, Tarquin. What the devil are they doing here? Well, I know what they're doing, I know what they've done. I mean, what they. Why aren't they in the stables? They can't stand the smell. 
Well, I, you can't, well, can't put them in the dressing room then. Put them in the, why are they in the, put them in the dressing room. They can't stand the smell there either. So, well, I have to put up with this, so why shouldn't I? Uh, no, put them, park them in a, in a dressing room, give them a television to watch, they'll be better off there. <laughs> bye bye, Duncan, go and put, put them, drop the blind then. <laughs> have a nice time watching the telly. That's, yes, look, all of you are better, better off than you are. They don't have to listen to me then, didn't <laughs> they? Well, now, look, ladies and gentlemen, after that br uh, brief encounter, what we'll do, we'll talk about some, um, some subjects, shall we, now for you? Now, the first one, as you can see, uh, now, uh, it's just television, the supernatural, health, marriage, miscellaneous, sport. <laughs> what about sex? <laughs> well, I can't for the moment. I'm in the middle of a... <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute! Wait, no! <laughs> Roger, there's someone doing your stuff up there. Did you hear that? What's your name? Uh, George. George? I don't know, I don't know your said. All right, then. We'll add another subject, then. George's problem. <laughs> George, O, R, G. All right, then, now. George, all right, then, let's try. George's problem. <laughs> television is the first one. So, ladies and gentlemen, now, let's have... Let's discuss television now. What do you think about television these days? I beg your pardon? What do you think about television? Do you think it's going uphill or downhill? Well, t tonight it's going uphill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's a place for me here, uphill. Listen, um... Do you think it's too permissive? But, well, it doesn't put me, it doesn't put me, me much, dear, I'll tell you that. Permissive. Do you think it's too, do you think it's too permissive? No, you don't. What do anybody else think? Yeah. Roger? It's all right. Oh, I think it's marvelous. I think some of it's terrible. It's very naughty, don't you think, some of it? Well, they get away with. Oh, I mean, it's really... I mean, I mean let's be honest, it's very permissive, really, because, I mean, you're sitting in your, in your sitting room, you're in your sitting room, I beg your pardon, in your sitting room, you're in your sitting room, I beg your pardon, Oh, there's a few lounges here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, I don't know what happened. I mean, you're in your, you're in your, in your lounge, you're there, it's, and it's all going on in front of you, isn't it? There's orgies and there's wife swapping, bondage, four little words, kinkiness. Well, I mean, when you turn the television on, you want to change from all that, don't you? <laughs> right. Pardon? Have you ever been to one? A seance? Well, they, you mean when they all sit around holding hands? No. I've sat around holding hands, but not at the seance. <laughs> no, I, but I, no, I tell you what, I did go. I, I went to a, a spiritualist. Anyone here, anyone here believe in the spirits? Yes. Anyone not here believe in the spirits? <laughs> yeah, I went, no, I went to a, the, one of those meetings, you know, they give messages. And I must say that, because I was, I was very sceptical. I thought, you know, I'm very sceptical. I marched myself in, and there was a, this woman, a very big woman, very imposing. And she, and I must say, it was packed out. She had this big audience. Well, she had two audiences, really. One in this world and one in the next. <laughs> she never stopped chatting to either, because you've got like those three. And of course, I'm a skeptic. I'm, and I'm like a fool. I parked myself in the front row. And she picked on me straight away. She was, she said, you, there. So I said, me? She said, yes, the elderly gentleman. She said, <laughs> She said, tell me, think. Now, she said, does the name Willie mean anything to you? <laughs> I said, Willie? Well, no. I thought even if it did, I wasn't going to say. <laughs> well, she said, there's definitely a Willie around you. <laughs> she said, yes, let me think now. Let me think now. Pale blue. I said, a pale blue Willie? She said, no. She said, no, no. She said, Willie's gone now. He might come back in a minute. Now she's going to have pale blue. Think, pale blue. Does it mean anything to you? I said, no. She said, never mind. We'll get there. We'll get there. Pale blue, blah, blue. Now she said, tell me, what uh, colour carpets do you have? What colour? You... I said, red. She said, no. Red. Well, no, no. We're, 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 we're getting there. We're getting there. Pale blue. She said, I know. What colour is your bedspread? I said, grey. She said, oh, no. No, no, no. We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, what are? Now, what colour are your walls? I said, beige. She said, beige. No, no, we're getting there. Pale blue. Ah! What colour's your lampshades? I said, orange. <laughs> she said, oh. Never mind. She said, pale, orange, grey, beige and red. She's making, making me feel sick. Never mind. 
Never mind. She said, I'm pale blue. She, ah, she said, I've got it. She said, tell me, did you recently buy a first-class stamp? I said, yes. She said, that's it, pale blue. <laughs> Health covers a multitude, isn't it? A multitude of, th I'm going to say sins, I meant things. Thank God we don't, we don't get everything through sinning, do we? Let me think now. Health. There's all sorts of health in the fringe medicine. Do you get anyone going for fringe? An alternative medicine, isn't there? Like comedy, alternative comedy. Diets, of course, people are dieting. Have you read the diet? <laughs> Guess. <laughs> I think I ought to. Don't you? Yes, I've got to lose a few. I lose a few pounds. As a matter of fact, I went, I, you know, last. Last uh, week, what's the day? And that's right, last Tuesday. I was. No, I, I was feeling limp. No, I, no, don't laugh. It's wicked to mock the afflicted. I was feeling limp. Anybody, anybody else here feel limp? Apart from, apart from any honeymoon couples. And I went to one of the doctors, I said, I, feel, I do, I feel sort of limp. He said, no, no wonder. He said, you, he said, you want to lose a few pounds? Go on a diet. I said, I have been on a diet. He said, yes, between meals, you mean. What about mental health? Mental health. Yeah. Have you heard that? One minute, one minute. I think she's going to get nasty now. What, <laughs> what about mental health? Have you ever dabbled in psychiatry? Dabbled? <laughs> have you dabbled in psychiatry, have you? I should be in a few things. You haven't dabbled in a psychiatrist, sure. Have you ever been to one? Be, be, been to one as a psychiatrist? No, I, I haven't been. But I, know, I tell you, I know a friend of mine. He, he's been, a friend of mine went. Well, his wife made him go. She, she, no, she, she made him go because he... Well, the thing was, you see, he went into the psychiatrist, so the psychiatrist said, sit down. And he said, tell me all about it now. He said, now, we're going to your case history. We'll try and find out. So they talk. Now, so this psychiatrist has got a piece of chalk. And he drew this long white line, you see, on the floor. Like that, you see? Long line. So he said, now, what does that night remind you of? So my friend said, sex. <laughs> he said, oh. So he drew two circles, big ones, and a small circle. Now he said, what does that remind you of? So my friend said, sex. <laughs> mm -mm. All right, let's try again. Now, <clears throat> so he drew a square with two circles underneath. Then a big triangle on top. Now, he said, can we assume that reminds you of sex as well? So my friend said, yes. But he said, your problem is very obvious. You are sex-obsessed. So my friend said, I'm sex... I'm sex-obsessed? Who's been drawing the dirty pictures? <laughs> That's the only way... The only way to deal with these people. That's... I, I, I tell you one thing. No, we, you laugh, though. I'll tell you something, do you know? I do you know I was reading this morning in the paper that one in four people are slightly mentally unbalanced? <laughs> yeah? One in every four people is slightly mentally unbalanced. Well, you, we'll see it for ourselves. Uh, what, is, what was your name, Mr. Thomas, sir? Tony, that's right, Tony, I've forgotten. Now, Tony, tell me. Now, I want you to think of three of your best friends. All right? Are they all right? Are they all right? Well, that's you, then, isn't it? <laughs> that's the answer. That proof of the pudding? <laughs> marriage. Ooh. Ooh. Here we go, marriage. What do you know about marriage? <laughs> you know about marriage? Pardon? You said, what do you know about marriage? What do I know about marriage? Well, I'll tell you what I do know, because it's the most important thing. I know that my parents were married. <laughs> that comes as a surprise, doesn't it, to you? How many married men again? Well, there we are. I mean, are you, you're married, you've told me. Roger, are you married? No. Yeah, well, you look all right. You look happy. <laughs> I'm the two here, almost praying. <laughs> are you married? No, he's told you something like that. Well, it's rather guilty faces, too. Mm. Tony, well, do you, I've, I'm going to tell you a story, as you're a married man, a story with a moral. Uh, Moses. You've heard of Moses, have you? Good. Now, Moses was the leader. What was he the leader of, do you know? The Israelites. That's right. You're almost right. <laughs> eh? You're all right for mastermind, the way you're going on. You're all right. <laughs> Moses, leader of the Israelites. He went up to the mountain, you see, to see God. 
went to see God to ne negotiate the commandments. To negotiate with God the commandments, you see. You've heard of God, that's for sure. <laughs> the commandments. So when he came down, he was exhausted. Oh, kind of exhausted. So they said, how'd you get on? But he said, first, the good news. I've got him down to ten. <laughs> now the bad news. Adulteress still in. <laughs> Guilt written all over it. Now that's... If that's what you've been doing, you've been adultifying. So my, let me tell you something, my friends. The moral, the moral is, love thy neighbour, but don't let your wife catch you at it. <laughs> that's the moral. Oh, no, listen. Listen. Listen, I, no, I tell you something which is true about marriage. You say, you ask me what I know about marriage. You're going to ask me about what I know about marriage. But in the in 1960s and the 60s, I was going through a rotten time, really, because I couldn't get what we call, you call them engagements, but we called work. We couldn't get any work, so I didn't have any money. And so it was, we, this is in the 60s. About three years we had of this, so <clears throat> I thought to myself, I'd get some work or some money from somewhere. So you won't believe this, but I got a job in the Marriage Guidance Council. <laughs> I mean, I knew nothing at all about it, which is why I got the job, I think. <laughs> and, I, yeah, I went to this marriage, but I couldn't... St I mean, I, well, I lasted a week. I mean, I couldn't stand the strain, the stress. I couldn't... Oh, I couldn't cope. No, I couldn't cope with it. Well, I mean, it, it really got me down, all this moaning and grumbling and groaning, you know, and, and the first day I was there, I'd been there about an hour. I was just having a cup of coffee, and this woman kept burst in. Distraught she was, absolutely distraught. She came in, she said, oh, dear! Oh, dear, she said. I'm leaving him. I'm leaving him. So I said, just a second, dear. Calm down a minute, love. You're leaving who? She said, my husband. I'm definitely going to leave my husband. But I said, first of all, tell me, when did you get married? She said, yesterday. <laughs> I said, yesterday? Dear. I said, well, what? Why are you leaving him? She said, after last night, the honeymoon, I should say so. I thought, oh, yes, this is interesting. So I said, well, tell me about it. Well, she said, well, well she said, I, I, I got myself all organised. She said, I put on me a see-through negligee. Lipstick, she said, I look really very nice. She said, I look really, really look nice. She said, and I went into the bedroom and I said, darling, what would you like? What can I do for you? What can I do for you? He said, I'll tell you what. You can give me a bath. <laughs> she said, a bath? Oh, well. So she laid him out in this bath. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. You haven't heard the, you haven't heard the rest yet. <laughs> now, she said, what can I do for you now? What would you like? He said, I'd like a storm. He, he, she said, he said, put your hand in now. Whip up the waves and the back water. Come on, get it going. Come on, quicker, faster. Waves, go on, make a big storm. That's right, splash, 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 big storm. That's right. Now, he said, that's a storm. Now, go on, let's have some thunder. Go on, kick the bath. So she's kicking the bath <laughs> and the waves going boom, boom, boom. He said, lightning, lightning. So she's put the lightning switch up and down. The, the lighting and splash. She said, wait, that's good to say for a second. She said, dear God. <laughs> She said, surely, look, we are married. <laughs> Husband and wife, wouldn't you like something else? Like sex? He said, in this weather, you must be out of your bloody mind. <laughs> so, so now, so we, now we start the, 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 the questions. Now, let's, uh, there was a lady. Let's have a lady. Yes, love, uh, a lady. Yeah, you once had a reputation, Mr Howard, for being, um, what, what? a little vulgar? <laughs> <laughs> Is she, is she with anybody, you know? <laughs> I, had, I had a reputation of being vulgar. Would you say that was a fair comment? Comment? Fair? Oh. I have never been. Oh. 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 oh! Your France is vulgar. <laughs> I tell you what, you, you, listen, love, you, the vulgarity. Well, vulgarity really is it's like beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder. You see, no, it's true. You see, what vulgar is to some people, that like actor, this half might not be vulgar to that half. You never know. Vulgarity is a question of what you think is vulgar. Uh, for instance, well, I'll tell you, it's in the eye of the beholder. Listen, now. We'll test it. <laughs> now. <laughs> Mrs. I have a friend who's a cricketer, plays cricket. And, uh, now. <laughs> No, for Tamworth. <laughs> he plays cricket. 
And uh, you see, sometimes he bats right-handed, and sometimes he bats left-handed. Sometimes right-handed, sometimes left-handed. And um, so I said to him, look, one day, I said, Ian, I said, tell me now. <laughs> when... <laughs> what method? Why do you sometimes you, you bat right-handed and sometimes you bat left-handed? Do you have a method? Do you, do you think it out? Is it because of the wind? Is it... Why? He said, no, the wife. I said, what do you mean, your wife? He said, no, he said, well, it's, it's a premonition. He said, I'm very superstitious, he said. I wake up in the morning, there is my wife lying on my side. Now, he said, if she's lying on her right side, I bat right-handed. Now, if she's <laughs> lying on her left side, wait a minute, wait a minute, I bat left-handed. Now, I said, so, wait a minute. Now, I said, Suppose she's lying on her back. He said, in that case, I phone up and say I'll be an hour late. Now, listen. <laughs> now, because, because that means she wants her breakfast in bed, you didn't let me finish, did you? <laughs> so who's vulgar, you or this lot or me? They are. They are, it's obvious. Mr Howard? Mr Howard? Yes, sir. What's your most embarrassing moment? Now. <laughs> Trying to get these to ask no, no, questions. I'm I mean in show business. Oh, in show business. Um, oh, show business. Oh, let me think. Oh, I, well, on the stage. I'll tell you on the stage. Do you remember, do you remember Sir James? Sir James? Yeah. We're doing a, we're do, I'm doing a pantomime with him at Coventry. <laughs> and uh, this is true. And uh, it, it was in the sort of the second half of the show. There was a pantomime called Puss in Boots. The second half of the show, Sid Jay was, was the baron. He was supposed to be chasing me. You see, I was Simple Simon. <laughs> now, <laughs> you find that easy to believe? <laughs> Simple Simon. And um, Sid Jay was, was chasing me in this thing, you see. Now, we went into a, a, a dress shop, or a lady's dress shop. And I sort of supposed to disguise myself, so I, the first time I, I, in my life, I, what they call, dragged up. I put on this sort of fairy outfit or something with a blonde wig on, and then, and you see, so that, you know, to try and confuse him. So we, we did the scene together, you see, he didn't know, but he, he was supposed to know he didn't, it wasn't me. But, at the end of it all, I had to say, well, I must go now, I must fly. I must fly. So, I thought I had a good, clever idea. So I said to the producer, I said, what we'll do? I said, it'd be nice if I could say, I must fly and fish and go. That'll be a good laugh. So they said, that's a good idea. Now, how are we going for it? Now, in those days, they had what they called Kirby's Flying Ballet. Now, Kirby's Flying Ballet is used for, for Peter Pan does this, you see. Peter Pan's on a, it's on a wire. And what they do, so they, they have this dress on, they put a hole in the back of the dress, and they put a, a hook in this thing. Now, here, there was a sort of big truss, right thing here. <laughs> and they stuck this wire, this hook there, and a big man on the side, about the size of Martin there, he was... And he, and he stands at the side and he goes, zoonk! And of course you, whoosh, off, you see, off you go, whoosh, whisk away. So I, I put this truss thing on, and I thought, I'm not sure about this, never mind, because, you see, the point is, that Peter Pan is play, played by a girl, and it's not quite the same thing, you see. <laughs> no, not the same thing. That's why Peter Pan has to be played by a girl, anyway. <laughs> she might have been a boy to start with, but the point was, I had this truss, great heavy thing, and this thing at the back here. I said, no, I must fly, so this man, it was like, oh, he had a few drinks. See, this first, yeah, he went in the first night and he went, ah, oh, la, 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 blop. And I shut up, went, hey! <laughs> oh, and I, oh, I was, my, my voice went up, I picked up, I said, oh, let me down, let me down! <laughs> I was swinging there and it hit the wall, it hit the wall, bang. And the truss went up the back here and came under, oh, I can't tell you. I thought, dear God, I'm a eunuch. <laughs> I lowered, anyway, gradually they lowered me. They lowered everything, <laughs> including my voice, thank God. That was the most awful. I, I, well, you, I know you won't, you'll believe me when I tell you. It was the only time I did it. After that, I said, no. Ah, bugger the flying joke. No, that's out. No, I, I think what I'm going to do now, 
We'll, uh, we'll have a bit of music for you now, which, uh, in my opinion, is, uh, if, if, if she's now sobered up, we'll, we'll do. So, um, <laughs> will you open the blind, please? I, that's what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen. I thought tonight I'll give you a, 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 a night... Do you like Viennese music? A night in old Vienna. See? And it's like the last night of the proms. It's lovely, this. Now, this is an opera attic aria, ladies and gentlemen. Um, don't clap, she'll want money. <laughs> I've told her this is an audition. Now, the thing is... <laughs> no, the thing is, she, she, don't, she can't hear very well. No, she can't hear much, and she's a very... She's bitter with it. She's a real misery gut. She really is. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> don't laugh, please. You'll get me into... Don't laugh, please. No, don't, please. You'll make trouble. I beg of you, don't laugh. Well, she can't hear. She's a fucking woman, you know. So, um, yeah, it's very chilly tonight, I know. There's a wind blowing up the passage tonight. Yes, chilly, yes. Think winter's back, yes. Poor old soul. <laughs> well, she's past it. I mean, she should be in bed. I think she's got another dress on already. <laughs> I don't laugh. No. So, anyway, we'll do this. Yes, it is. It's very chilly tonight. Yes, I... Th uh, chilly along the prom, the wind biting, yes. Poor old soul. Now, no, don't laugh. It might be one of your own. Don't laugh. <laughs> now, we'll do the song now. Do the song now! We'll do the song now! No, no, please, no, don't. Now, we'll do the aria. It's an aria. We'll do the aria now! We'll give them an aria! She doesn't know whether she's an aria or her elbow. Now, this is... <laughs> no, don't laugh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no. Hers is a sad story. No, her, don't laugh. Hers is a sad story. Yours? I was just saying, yours is a sad story! No, she's a, it's a sad... No, what, no, don't. No, she was abandoned as a baby, you know. No, she was. It is a... Tell you a sad story! And, of course... No, she was abandoned as a baby. She was left on the doorstep. And unfortunately, it was the doorstep of the zoo, the local zoo. <laughs> and, no. Of the zoo, wasn't it? And, of course, this zookeeper was very kind. He brought her up very well. He was very kind. But, you see, she didn't see any other children. She just brought up with the animals. That's all she ever saw was animals. And she picked up all their habits, you see. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, she, she can still peel a banana with her feet, you know. <laughs> still fill a banana with your feet. And, of course, if... She won't eat fish unless you throw it to her. I mean, she's really no. <laughs> I tell you, if you give her monkey nuts, I don't tell you where she puts them. <laughs> <laughs> I was just telling you a sad story. And the thing is, you know, you see, she's, the trouble is she's not attractive to men. No, I said, no, she's not attractive to men. The men, men, you see, men don't find her attractive, you see. She's been turned down more often than a hospital blanket. <laughs> And, of course, like, five years ago, tragedy struck. Tragedy struck five years, years ago! <laughs> In Torremolinos. No, she... No. No, she, late at night, you see, she was hanging about. She was hanging around late at night. And she was purloined. She was whisked away. See, the white slave traffic. <laughs> white slavery, yes. And, of course, you see, and, and all these men. And, of course, next day, when daylight came and they saw what she looked like, they sent her back. <laughs> she was livid. She, livid. She's, every year, she, there she is in Torremolinos. Goes every year, hanging around. I say, you go to Torremolinos every year. It's just a shame, really. It's a shame. Anyway, look, let's do... What we're going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll now take this book. And, um, it's a very old book. I found in it a poem. It's a recitation. So tonight, to make a choice. I'm going to give you a re we're, we're going to give you a dramatic recitation. Now, uh, oh, I think yes, I am. Here we are. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this recitation is very dramatic. It's stark drama. <laughs> Shut your face. <laughs> Francis is talking. No, stark drama. And while I'm doing this drama, you may find yourselves strangely moved. <laughs> but try and stick it out if you can. 
Now, the music for this recitation has been composed especially for me by Beethoven. <laughs> if you haven't heard of Percy Beethoven of uh, Bridgewater, that's your problem, not mine. Anyway, here we are then. This dramatic recitation, ladies and gentlemen. I should have your handkerchiefs ready if, if I were you, because... <laughs> no, I don't. That... Go. It's the sad tale of a wooden leg. <laughs> it was Christmas Eve in the old brown cow. And the whiskey was flowing like shandy. When in walked a man on his one-legged dad, and his one good leg was bandy. <laughs> his false leg was carved from a sycamore tree. And each summer, it drove him half bonkers, because when April was out, he started to sprout. <laughs> and his kneecap was covered in conkers. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying... <clears throat> he was... He, he was trying to find... One of his kind, a daughter, last heard of in Dover. She'd run off forlorn, because when she was born, he christened the poor girl Rover. <laughs> he went to the bar and ordered a jar, a pipe drawn straight from the keg. Then the lad landlord's dog, Chump, took a sniff at his stump. <laughs> I shall repeat that in case I don't. <laughs> Did I splash any of you? <laughs> then the landlord's dog chum took a sniff at his stump and started to cock up its leg. <laughs> <laughs> it was just about then, a quarter to ten, or it could have been ten and a quarter. Out of the night came a horrible sight. It was Rover, Dan's runaway daughter. From that, thank you. <laughs> You're doing well. From her head to her foot, she was covered in soot. She'd spent 14 weeks on a whaler. They'd used her as bait. And to settle her fate, she'd been put in the club by a sailor. <laughs> Dan said, why did you do it? Why did you go and leave your poor father that way? She said, don't shout, I beg. It was that wooden leg. The sight of that drove me away. Every middle of June, it needed a prune. But the foliage grew thick as thieves, and I'll always remember by the end of September, the bedroom was knee deep in leaves. <laughs> but what made me take flight was that terrible night when I found that your leg was infested in a crack in your knee. I saw a queen bee in a hole where two squirrels had nested. <laughs> Dan said, don't fret. There's hope for us yet. I'm having a new leg created. It's been made in the cellar by an Indian fella, and it's going to be all metal-plated. Now, the end of this story is sad to relate. Indeed, it's rather quite frightening. The one thing the Indian fella forgot is that metal's affected by lightning. <laughs> Dan went out for a walk. One wild, stormy night. With the rain beating down on each window, there was a hell of a crash and a lightning flash. And poor Dan was burnt to a cinder. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm nice. Oh, we haven't finished yet. We haven't finished yet. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> she must have picked somebody up on the seafront. <laughs> must have dashed away. Donk. Naughty, naughty. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, as you're such a, a, a good class all here tonight, <laughs> appreciate something artistic. I was... <laughs> How dare you. Now, I was watching you all earlier on. Uh, through the interval, I was watching you all through a crack in the wall, and I could see a lot of lovely ladies here tonight, a lot of lovely ladies. And I thought I'd sing a song tonight dedicated to all the beautiful girls, the lovely ladies here tonight. And I thought to myself, now, nay, Francis, nay, nay. All the entertainers sing songs dedicated to the lovely ladies, but nobody ever gives a damn for the poor old married men. And you can always tell them they're sad. 
depleted, <laughs> woe-begone look. <laughs> Poor devils. So I'm going to sing a song tonight, especially for the married men here. It is, of co <laughs> it is of course, a hymn. <laughs> um, well, I'm singing this hymn. Perhaps the ladies would like to stand in tribute. <laughs> well, please yourselves. Now, this is the Married Man's National Anthem. It's, it's the Married Man's National Anthem. It's entitled, I Haven't Had a Bang Since Firework Night. <laughs> don't get common, don't show us up. And I'm going to be accompanied for this vendetta on the piano 40, not 50, 40, by Madame Rogers. <laughs> Madame Rogers, known to me as Cuddles, and known to the Navy as Dockyard Dora. Now. <laughs> Will you give us a note, dear? Do you mean a note? Just give us a note. Fun or a bit. Fun. You see, that, did, that ruined me, that trust thing. Yes. Fun. All together. See, it's, it's painful, isn't it? Ah, that's it. For God's sake, keep your finger on that quick before the pills wear off. <laughs> and Marilyn Man's national anthem. May God be with you all. <laughs> I'm married to a woman, Big Aggie is her name. From the day I said I will, I've suffered grief and pain. She talks and 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 talks <laughs> And talks and talks and eats. <laughs> then she nips into the fountain, the fountain, that's the pub across the street. That's where all the scandal mongers and the heavy boozers meet. It was my wife, Mrs. Sykes, and Mrs. Hardcastle. Three wives in the fountain, <laughs> each one knocking back the stout. There they sit in the fountain till it's time for chucking out <laughs> three old bags in the fountain each one longing for to roam there they sit in the fountain too far gone to stagger home <laughs> which one is the biggest pest which one will the cops arrest? Their coins they are counting, hoping they can pay the fine. Just one wife will get sentenced. One will soon be doing the time. Make it mine. Make it mine. Thank you very much. Give me here. Give me a drink. Give me a drink. Come on. Come on. 